greatest. Sweet. Sour. So good to taste. Welcome to Great Taste on, well, this is Great Taste Fairfield Media Center's presentation on YouTube, right? And we're at Green Building Supply, and I was going to even tell you guys ahead of time, which I forgot, of course, to clap, because, you know, nobody claps in audiences unless they put, they put up big signs usually, but we don't have one. So you can now clap and tell everybody that you're here. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great to have you with us. Jason Strong is here producing this show. We're really very pleased to have Green Building Supply hosting us. And of course, everybody's Whole Foods is uh, providing all the ingredients for us. I have two wonderful cooks here with me today. Yashu Sharma has been with us before. It was just, I remember being in love with the lemongrass soup. Now, I'm not going to tell you what my lemongrass plant looks like because you would be very upset. We've been trying. It's, it's still, well, the problem is that we've never gotten it outside. So, it's, so after we, we nursed it all winter long and never got it outside anyway. Well, I'm working on it. So, so, so uh, thank you for coming again. You're welcome. So, thank you. So glad to see you. And we'll talk about what you're going to make in just a minute or two. Okay. okay. And, and you brought a friend of yours along with, with uh, you tonight, right? So this is Ramya Velamuri. Yes. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. I'm yeah. very glad. Yeah. It's really going to be fun. And I'm particularly um, interested because the preparations, the things that you're doing are a little bit different than anything I've you know, I'm familiar uh -huh. with. So that's really exciting. And if, in case I forgot, and it's forgettable, my name is Steve Boss, and I'm the host of this show. So anyway, we're going <laughs> to, that was funny, wasn't it, actually? Yeah. A anyway, <laughs> one person clapped. Thank you, Nancy. That's really nice. Oh, even one more. That's great. You guys are awesome. I must, I must tell you that. Anyway, before we get started and get into the show, I want to also mention that we do this the first Tuesday of every month except when we don't do it. Uh, but usually it's the first Tuesday of every month. The only times we don't do it is if it's New Year's Day or cool. July 4th or something like that, right? Or, oh yeah, one time it was too cold, wasn't it? Two times, okay. All right, we won't talk about that. Anyway, the next show is Tuesday, August the 6th. And I can tell you right now that the star of that show is Mark Cohen, who's sitting right there. And he's going to be making what I understand is his very famous eggplant parmesan. So that is going to be that is going to be really great. I'm definitely definitely already looking forward to that. So that's uh, on uh, August the 6th, September 3rd. Kathy Peterson will be back. She has a whole menu planned of items that she wants to prepare. She's been thinking about it for months, which is kind of cool. And on October 1st, which is the first Tuesday in October, Walker Homestead and their whole crew are going to be here. Walker Homestead is a farm, CSA, winery, um, restaurant. Not, they can't call themselves a restaurant uh, because of zoning. So they're a farm, a winery, a a plates place, <laughs> right, just north of Iowa City. And they're all going to be coming down, and uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll have a good time with all of them here. All right, so we better get into what we're going to be doing. So, Yashu, do you want to tell us a little bit? Before you tell us a little bit about what you're going to do, I thought maybe what we should do is just have you tell us a little bit about yourself again. Okay. So I'm doing, uh, I'm a visiting research scholar. I'm basically from India from Karnataka, South India. Uh, I'm doing a postdoc research here uh, on medicinal herbs. I'm working on sage and rosemary plants, medicinal uses of them, and means the how to use them in hypertension, Alzheimer's, and uh, antioxidant property of those. I already published a couple of papers on those herbs and looking for more for, from them. So now, let me just ask you, I use a lot of fresh rosemary and fresh sage when I cook, so am I good? Is that, is that good? Uh, using a lot of sage is not good. Well, I don't mean a lot of okay. sage. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, I use some fresh sage yeah. Yeah. in certain dishes. Okay. I know that. I actually know that because in Italy, they yeah. fry sage leaves a lot and serve it as appetizers. And you always have to remember not to try to eat 10 million of them. Why is that, by the way? 
So it contains one compound, chemical compound called uh, thugene, alpha thugene and beta thugene compound. Uh, it causes the convulsion. Uh, so that's why it's not good to eat more of them. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> sounds, sounds reasonable. Uh, okay, so, so uh, now what are you going to prepare? Uh, today I'm preparing three dishes. <laughs> One is uh, mint rice. The, I'm making a little bit of aromatic and medicinal here. So I'm making mint rice, simple mint rice recipe with spearmint. And uh, another one is the oregano soup starter <laughs> by using oregano like last time I did with lemongrass. It's like that. And the another one is dessert, which all of you will like. So that's moong dal kheer I'm making. So that is really fascinating to me. I've never heard of moong dal kheer because normally the kheer that I'm familiar with is made with rice. rice yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, kheer could be made from most of even from vegetables like the calabash. Last time uh, uh, we did with like uh, the Nirja cook did the vegetable for her, the vegetable recipe. The calabash or it's also called as the bottle gourd. So that could be used for making the kheer and rice. And there are so many dals you can use for making the kheer. Mm. Very interesting. I'll, I will look forward to that. <laughs> Ramya, what about you? Oh. oh, I didn't explain that to you, did I? <laughs> Everybody who sees this is so bored of me t saying that you can't touch this. <laughs> and it's not because I'm possessive. It's because Jason gets mad because it makes noise when other people oh, touch yeah. it back and forth. Okay? So I just want you to know it's not, it's not my rule. You. It's his rule. It's all his rule. Thank you. Okay, so tell us a little bit about where you're from. Okay, I'm Ramya, Ramya Valamuri. I'm fr we, are, we are from India, uh, basically from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we are from a city called Vishakhapatnam. It has beautiful beaches and then it's a wonderful city. And uh, uh, we are here from past one and a half years. So I was a scientist and a project manager. I worked as a project manager in one of the pharma companies for three years. Now I'm a homemaker. I have a beautiful family with a six-year-old son. Who's here? Yeah, who is here, my mm -hmm. husband mm -hmm. and my son. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so now I'm enjoying the life of a beautiful homemaker and mother. So along with that, I do, uh, uh, I'm an artist, so I do jewelry and paper crafts, paper crafting and other things at home. Uh, in my time, and this is the one which I made. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful, very, very beautiful. So what are you going to make for us? I'm going to make a chutney. Uh, so Andhra Pradesh is uh, famous for chutneys. We make a lot of chutneys. So I'm going to make a chutney with carrot, and it has ginger. So carrot, usually we eat as a salad or we just steam them. This is a tasty and healthy way of eating carrot. It has a lot of good spices like methi, fenugreek, coriander and all that. And it has, it is, it has tamarind and jaggery. So it's both sweet, tangy, a little bit spicy. So you will love it. So when you say that you eat it as a salad, does that mean it's eaten in a different way than we normally think of chutneys? Because normally when we think of chutneys, we think of them as some little accompaniment to, that you use as more, we would term it, I like, guess, a sauce kind of thing. Uh, so I mean to say about salad is eating carrot. So we usually eat as a salad. So this is a, an, another way of eating carrot. So this you can use as a dressing on any uh, sandwich and as a dip for one, any of for your chips and all that and you can use in your burgers and it goes very well with little hot rice and ghee on it nice it's wonderful <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a, oh, i'll tell you what i am uh, really excited so <laughs> So, all right. So let's let's find out a little bit about. I, I don't want to get in the way of what you guys are doing. So, if you need to focus at a particular time, tell me, and I'll move to talk to someone else, or I'll just go on by myself, which I can do. And uh, so, what I would like to do then is, uh, do you need to get started, or can I speak with you some more right now? Yeah, you can. Okay, great. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about? You said that your home, where you're from, is is. Uh, got a lot of beaches so it must be very beautiful there and it's also near a major city Hyderabad is that right yes mm -hmm. yeah it's near to Hyderabad mm -hmm. and uh, Vishakhapatnam has a very old big port uh, that was the first 
uh, port in the south india and it has a very uh, famous uh, ancient temple called lakshmi narsimha swami temple very famous and then it has a beautiful forest area and all that uh, so that city is full of beaches and then you will love the climate and all that mm. yeah. now what foods are really well known from that particular area i know hyderabad biryanis are really very much a part of that particular food culture okay. but now we've moved a certain number of kilometers away from there and on the port right on the sea so the food's going to be different yes so there you get a lot of different uh, variety of mangoes there and different varieties of mangoes and you have sea so you will get all the seafood different variety of seafood there and uh, the places most of them are like uh, vegetarians you'll get a lot of vegetables and then fruits and it's we call a, a special fruit called custard apple and mm -hmm. it's famous there uh, it's kind of it will have seeds and then it's a different fruit you don't get anywhere it's specific to that area mm -hmm. and we have a place called araku it's kind of a hill station near to vizag and you get a very nice uh, coffee over there oh yeah very nice coffee okay and and so uh, when you were growing up what were some of the most I guess iconic dishes that your was it your mother that that cooked in your family or your grandmother or was it did you have someone else outside who cooked for you? Uh, my mom, my dad, grandmother, all of them, and when my mom is always a special. Mom's cooking is always special, mm -hmm. and when we were studying in, in other city and come to home for holidays, my dad used to make special dinner. So that I remember, he's he was even a very a uh, good cook. So are there any particular dishes that you remember that he used to cook for you specifically when you came home? Yeah, he used to make one vegetable with soya, soya chunks, and that's a nutrilla we call it the kind of uh, a kind of beans we make with soya. And so he used to cook with that, and then tomato dal. That is his special. <laughs> okay, so now the soya. I mean, soy isn't. Is it indigenous to that part of, of so, India? Uh, it's like they make it out of uh, the material uh, mm -hmm. they get when mm -hmm. they collect the oil from the soya. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of proteins mm -hmm. and fiber, so it's mm -hmm. good for even, right. yeah. Healthy. And tomato and tomato. Tomato dal. Tomato dal. Yeah, oh, that like sounds real. <laughs> now we should have done that. That's, this is that. Next month would be a good one for tomato dal here. But, but uh, it, what, what you're saying is very fascinating to me for another reason, and that is that in the food world over the last uh, few years, what's been uh, one of the hottest topics has been this topic of, of, um, of uh, people um, cooking other people's cuisines. So in other words, we'll say a white chef making Chinese food, all right? And then a, maybe a Mexican chef making uh, uh, American food or what ever and and so it's it's Indian baking cakes or Indian, Indian baking, baking cakes, cakes right and so there's this there's this this thread has been going on for several years about whether or not there's um, something that's not right about all this you know people appropriating other people's cuisines and making it their own and and I have very strong opinions about this whole thing because um, the truth is and you've already done it for us already food travels Tomato is not indigenous to India. Tomato is not indigenous to Italy, even though it's a part of the culture. It's used all the time, especially in the South. In India, it's now one of the major ingredients that's used in so many different foods. Soy certainly isn't a part of that either. And we could go on and on and on. In the, in the States, the same. We have so many foods that were introduced. The, the British brought so many things because they got around in some nefarious ways, actually. Um, they brought all kinds of different foods to different parts of, of the world and, and many other countries, Spain, Ar the Arabs, always. And so I, I'm not even sure, and, and uh, luckily there's no one here who's going to challenge me. Uh, I, I'm not even sure that uh, this is even a valid topic because food travels, food migrates, people travel, people migrate. And so there's always going to be influences from you know, other places. And 
besides that, cuisines evolve and they change. So I think it's really interesting that you said that these were some of the key dishes and they don't even have to do it. Well, I was just reading recently too that in the South, and you may know the name of this, I don't, I don't remember it, but it's when you celebrate the passing of an ancestor and there's a special meal that's cooked once a year and there's someone um, I read this article about this one chef who's using that circumstance to make sure that only indigenous foods for from that particular area are used in the preparation of the dishes yes yeah we make usually that is called the ancestors day so we make uh, one sweet dish and we make vada have you heard of that the dal vada we make from a uh, black gram dal and also one one kheer any like sweet dish or usually we prefer kheer so either rice the kheer with rice or we make vermicelli kheer so yeah wonderful and and he was he in this particular uh, article what they were pointing out was that you know he the different foods that he was using he wasn't using any potatoes for example which are just yeah, gigantic yes. right i'm about to say that mm. so it's very specific that we don't use any vegetable like potato tomato which are not authentic in india mm -hmm. especially on that day mm -hmm. and then this which are grown uh, you know known in india mm -hmm. so which are so those vegetables we use and then certain spices we don't use mm -hmm. uh, during that day and then it it is done in a certain way that the woman and whoever is performing will take that as a auspicious event and then it's like they do it uh, that it's uh, so what they consider is one year for us is one day for them so it's with all the respect and the due respect they do that mm -hmm. and there are certain uh, uh, you know rules which we follow when we cook for them mm -hmm. on that specific day. Mm -hmm. So we don't use potato, no on onion, garlic, anyway we don't eat mm -hmm. and we don't use tomatoes and cauliflower, cabbage, mm -hmm. which are migrant, you know, not right. uh, original. Uh, you're, just, you're just naming everything yeah. that probably most people, when they think about Indian food, but I always eat cauliflower, I always eat potatoes, I always eat tomatoes, right? And it's like all yeah. just br been brought in from other cultures. Very interesting. Yeah, they have specific menu and mm -hmm. they cook the same all mm -hmm. the time. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay, so do you want to tell us a little bit about how you're going to prepare uh, the, yes. what are you going to do first? first mint rice. Okay. So here are the ingredients. I have already soaked the rice here. So I have already soaked the uh, rice. Basmati rice, right? Basmati rice, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you've soaked it for about a half hour before? Yes, 20 minutes is enough, mm -hmm. So, but I, it's already 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm adding a little bit of vegetables, the carrot and beans, the green beans, or you can also add a green peas instead of that. And any other vegetable, if you like, the potato, onion, and garlic, you can add. But <laughs> I'm not adding that. So I'm just adding the beans and uh, carrot. And the mint here. So mint leaves, this is a spearmint. Yeah, with not peppermint. Right, that's right. That is yes. spearmint, not yes. peppermint. So it's yes. different than what I have. Pudina, in it's also called as pudina. So this mint. And I'm adding a little bit of ginger, not this much, but a little bit. And some of the spices, like the pepper, cumin, and the cloves, ground cloves, and then the cinnamon, and a little bit of cardamom. Okay, and those are added, so these are added whole, some of the spices are whole, yeah. and some of them are actually ground already, all right? The cumin is whole, and all others are ground, mm -hmm. and also I'm adding the coconut, desiccated coconut. Shredded, shredded, shredded coconut. coconut, shredded, dried coconut. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. You can also add the coconut milk if you like, mm. yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds like it would be good, that's for sure. So this is the ingredient for okay. it. First, I will uh, take this pan to cook, and I will put a little bit of oil. So it is just mainly, uh, I'm not adding much of uh, oil, only a little bit to fry these, the mm -hmm. spices and the mint leaves and ginger. Okay, so first there'll be oil, we're going to use sunflower oil, sunflower right? Oil. And, and I'm going to let you get going with that. And as I see you doing something different, I'll come back to you so we can make sure we don't miss any of the parts. And if you need to get me, just tap, you know. Yes, we'll, you can also use a... Um, ghee instead of the sunflower oil, but I prefer the oil 
means after, like while eating, you can also add ghee. Yes, we're going to do that, right? <laughs> yes. We, we've got plenty of ghee here for it, so that'll be great. And ghee is clarified butter, in case people don't know what that is. So it's butter that uh, has been processed to remove the milk fats, basically, right? Yes. That's what happens, right? Okay. All right, so now what about your process? What are you going to do? So I'm going to make carrot chutney. So my chutney has uh, uh, with the different spices, like the coriander seeds, uh, fenugreek seeds, uh, urag dal, the black lint and little red chili and hing, uh, jaggery uh, and the ginger. So this this has all uh, the all the ingredients were healthier. Uh, so fenugreek, coriander, the urag dal, they all uh, enhance your appetite. They are good for digestion. Carrot is good for uh, uh, your eyes. It has ginger, good for your stomach and digestion. And then the, the carrots also, you know, improves the aging. They protect the aging process. It's good to eat carrot every day. So kind of having all the, uh, and I'm, I'm adding, using tamarind in it. So tamarind also usually in India uh, for kids when they are about uh, from two years to five years. So every day we make a rasam, it's a liquid with tamarind and jaggery. So they say that the tamarind enhances the bone strength. So it's mm. good to use the tamarind mm. and the jaggery too. Instead of the regular white sugar, so we use uh, the jaggery. So this rasam, it just has in it tamarind and jaggery, that's and it? And then some spices, we make a powder at home. Mm -hmm. So that powder with jaggery and the tamarind. And what's that called? Uh, it's called rasam. Oh yeah, uh, rasam, yeah. right. In, in our language, it's called charu. <laughs> yeah. Charu. Charu, yeah. Okay, I have to look that up, that looks great. And then also you have some yeah, fresh curry, curry leaves, yeah. right? Yes, fresh curry leaves for the seasoning. I'm going to use them in the seasoning. And it has asafoetida, hink. That, is, that also has a good um, medicinal values and good for digestion. So, and I'm using mustard seeds in the seasoning. So my chutney has, uh, I cook in three parts. The first, I make the seasoning, keep, keep it aside, and then roast all the spices, and then I grind them, and then cook the uh, carrots, ginger, tamarind, jaggery with salt. So all together, uh, the roasted spices and the vegetables, I grind into a paste, then add the seasoning. Well, we'll be watching. That's going to be really, really interesting. I have to tell you, because this is, I got such a kick out of that. You were talking about how, you know, this is uh, the carrot or what, what was it? Something was good for aging, you know, to, to keep premature aging, you know, all right? And um, so what's really interesting is that I, I've always had this thing about, people in other countries who do packaging for the estates, and of course the packaging has to be in English, right? And for some reason, and I knew this more uh, when I was in Italy, I, I would see these different Italian companies, so they would all be writing up information about mm -hmm. packaging, and then you'd read it and it was like, didn't make sense. And I think we're all used to that in, in different ways. And when I was at a, an Indian food store uh, in January, and there was a whole uh, line of spices and herbs from India, and on the front, and it was organic, mm -hmm. and on the front it says, promotes premature aging. <laughs> and of course they of course they didn't mean that, right? They meant inhibits or prevents, right? Prevents premature aging. But they they did it themselves. They didn't get somebody whose English was their first language. So it's like, I thought that was, that was one of the funniest things that I've, I've seen uh, in terms of not getting your message across the way you want to get it across. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did very well in, in your message. Okay, so you're just basically sauteing your veggies right now. Yes, yeah, I have added uh, cumin, ginger, and vegetables. So now I will add a little bit of uh, uh, mint leaves. I will chop it into a not too small like this mm -hmm. and then I'll add okay the I'm gonna move these so people can actually maybe see you a little bit so it's just you just rough chop the yeah. the herb right yeah. and it's really probably it's probably very important to use the spearmint instead of peppermint yes peppermint it adds like a uh, the a taste is like you feel like you are eating some 
uh, what do you call mouth freshener or something <laughs> this is a, a spearmint it adds a different taste yeah yeah, yeah i could tell it was yeah. it's much different yeah. than uh, than what we have in our garden so i think we're gonna have to find some spearmint plants uh -huh. somewhere to, to do that so that's great all right now do you need to get in here a little bit yeah, closer to all right i'll move over just a little bit here and if you need any assistance let me know do you need some ghee to get started or you use sunflower oil, oil? you also use the oil okay so i think that this is a really good thing to remember is that try to always use the best oil that you can afford all right and and especially high heat oil that takes high heat when you're going to do this kind of thing saute or on this on the stove top because you don't want to use oil that has a, a low smoke point because that's not going to be good uh, so you try to use the best oil that you can that has a high smoke point sunflower is a great one to use safflower is another one you could use and uh, peanut if, if that's what you like you know and you're not allergic to it you could use peanut oil that's also good or you can use ghee as you said that's another thing that yeah, usually ghee it is not good to cook ghee at the like uh, if you are seasoning with ghee you have to see that it is not heated at high temperature so if by heating the ghee it converts to carbon it's like it won't uh, your body won't absorb that much of the hot, heated like the Otherwise, if you heat too much, it's not good. But, but ghee has a very high smoke point, too. And I, I'm very curious about this because in, in a lot of Indian dishes, you know, the yeah, tadka did, at the end, the tadka yeah. is, is made by tempering the spices in it. And the, I always thought the ghee was supposed to be very, very hot to do that. Mm, yes, but we just... Not too hot. Uh, to, we just add all the spices at once and then put it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we are putting it and keeping it at a high temperature for a long time. Yeah. So as soon as it gets just to that point where, you know, you know it's hot enough, yeah, but, but not too hot, yes, yeah. right, you add the spices and take it yes, off the heat. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we add most of the, like, ghee at the end of the dishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Good. Not at the beginning. So we add, like, ghee while eating the rice, mostly mm -hmm. like while eating. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm also interested that uh, an oil that I know is used in India is mustard seed oil. Mustard seed oil, uh, sunflower oil and coconut oil. Where I live, it's only the coconut oil we use. Okay, so why is it that there's so much information that you shouldn't use mustard seed oil to cook with? Or to, uh, to ingest, actually? It's bitter. It's a little bit of bitter in taste. But, but otherwise, it's safe to use. Yes, it is safe to use. Be because I, I have to tell you, I bought a bottle of mustard seed oil from an Indian uh -huh. shop. Uh -huh. And right on the bottle, it said, it was organic mustard seed oil, and it said not to be um, taken internally. Uh, I wonder if there's a, something in the States that, you know, they don't, I don't know. I, uh, I should. Uh, it contains the brassinosteroids, so which is not good for your health if you consume it, like, too much. Hmm. Yeah, that's not like, but at some point it is like beneficial for your health. It has an anti-cancer property. So. I like the smell and I like the, the, the sound. <laughs> so I'm sorry, so at some point it's beneficial for your health. Yeah, it's it's uh, good for your health. It has anti-cancer property and it reduces like your cholesterol level. It's an unsaturated fatty acid. So, so, uh, so it's good for your health. Okay, so I shouldn't worry about cooking with mustard yes. seed oil. It's okay. Yes. And it has it takes high heat also? Uh, yes, it takes high heat. You can cook it at high heat. All right, I'm going to start using that right away then. <laughs> that sounds, sounds absolutely perfect. By the way, if anybody has a question, you know, just, you know, you can uh, say it out and I'll repeat it because they won't be able to hear you uh, on the mic. But if you have a question, you'd be sure to uh, be happy to, to answer it. Sure. Oh, are you going to be able to get measurements for this? Uh, I, I will ask them. You know, I'm really bad at delivering all that, as you know, but... Uh, yes, uh, I have, I, now I'm using the two cups of rice. So my cup measurement is like, I have used the... Uh, I think she actually has a recipe that she sent me and I can probably post for you. So I use two cups of rice and for this I'm using uh, four cups of water. I have soaked for... 20 to 30 minutes so now I have like added a chopped vegetable to a carrot and about 15 to 20 beans and then about like 20 to 30 this kind of the mint 
And, and I think you gave me the recipe, didn't yes. you? Yeah, I okay. gave you the So I, I'll, I will send that out. And if I don't, you, someone will chastise me and I will make sure to get it out. If you're on the mailing list, you'll get it. And if you're not, then you can sign up for the mailing list. All right? So that, that, that's easy then. I think you, you gave me the recipe for all three of these. Yes. yes. Okay, good. So you don't have to worry. The recipe is available. Well, that's really unusual. So, so great. So I've done my seasoning here. So I just heated uh, two, table, two teaspoons of oil, I added mustard seeds, cumin seeds, asafoetida and the curry leaves. So when once the uh, mustard seeds and the cumin seeds are uh, roasted and they start splittering, so I removed it. So now I'm roasting the dal. So I took for this cup of, for this measurement of carrots and ginger, I added two tablespoons of uh, uh, the urak dal. Uh, the black ram and uh, half one teaspoon of the coriander seeds and few fenugreek fenugreek is little bitter in taste so we we just add let few mm -hmm. i just roast these along with the few red chili you can add this as per your taste and you <laughs> can completely avoid it's not a must uh, ingredient so we as we eat little spicy so we add that <laughs> After once the all these spices are roasted, so we, I'll just remove them and then cook the carrots. Okay. Now, do you normally roast the dal or toast the dal before you make dal? Uh, for regular dals, we don't. Mm -hmm. Some they prefer because it gets it will be cooked easily once mm -hmm. you roast the dal. Mm -hmm. And for chutneys, definitely we roast all the dals, mm -hmm. whatever we use. So we use the chana dal, we use the thur dal. So we make chutney with. All dals, all types of dals, <laughs> and all vegetables. This is just—I mean, this is really fascinating. I, I can't wait to, to watch the rest of the process and also get a chance to eat some of, of the food. So now, tell us what you've—you've you've added the water now. I and have added water, mm -hmm. four cups of water, mm -hmm. and also rice, mm -hmm. soaked rice. And I am adding a like a, about two to three spoons of the desiccated coconut or shredded coconut. Mm -hmm. And this is all going to cook for about how long? Uh, till it, take, till it takes to cook the rice? Or, yeah, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. 20 or 30 minutes. So, okay. if, yeah. And is that basically it then? There, is there something you have to finish? Uh, this is it. So That's it? Yes. Uh, and you can, uh, you can eat once it is cooked. So you can eat it with yogurt or raita. Or you can also like uh, eat with dal. Mm -hmm. right. Wow. So, or chutney, right? Now, today we are eating with chutney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can eat it with, at, at your home, you can eat it with raita or dal. And I'm using mint leaves because, like, uh, mint has again a lot of medicinal property. It contains a lot of, uh, it contains carbon. Uh, this spearmint contains a lot of carbon. Carbon, it has a, a property of, like, uh, it helps to overcome the flatulence and the acidity it has a cooling property it if you drink a mint, mint tea it cools your body it's good in the summer to drink a mint tea and also this uh, is um, as a peppermint it has a little bit of heating property whereas spearmint it is better than the peppermint wow yeah. this is great information this is yeah. really really good yes nancy what question and a comment. Mm. Is sort of a medicinal if you have, you come up here because I think that you've got too much to say to, to, uh, to do this off mic. So let's, yes. This is an aromatherapy show too, because it feels the, the aromas that are coming out of this are so healing and, and, and soothing and enlivening. I really appreciate that. And I was wondering if the two of you think about dosha balancing things when you put all of these interesting different there's the bitter, there's the sweet, there's the, the pungent. Or is that a kind of purposeful blend of, of spices and herbs that you use for keeping a, a balance in the food you're offering? Okay, so before we get into that, we better start by talking about what does that mean. So do you want to tell, tell everyone what, what she meant when she said, do you think about dosha balancing? So here, uh, dosha balancing means uh, some of the herbs, they have a heating property and some of them, they have a cooling property. 
for example so whatever i use the mint it has a cooling property where i use lot of spices it has a heating property which balances the doshas they either cooling or heating so usually uh, same in case of each and every day show she is using carrots carrot which has a little cooling property and she is using the uh, jaggery uh, and ginger which has a heating like it uh, heats your body or it maintains that the balance of the those uh, properties so basically when you're cooking you're thinking about whether or not you know you're balancing the different influences yes. that the food will have yeah. also well, some people call it the energetics of yes. food yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's like uh, whatever we the whole food it is a combination of the both and at the end it balances your dosha either it's a pitta vata or kapha it balances all those things okay so what you're talking about is in ayurveda right yeah. so there are three doshas three main doshas yeah. right so pitta vata and kapha and every person's comprised ayurveda says that every person's comprised of some parts of these yeah. three doshas usually two doshas uh, uh, they they are like two doshas are the main and the other one is like hidden or <laughs> suppressed so I have like pitta prakriti or it is called as prakriti or dosha pitta prakriti I have so uh, and so many people they have vata and so many have a uh, kapha prakriti. So, so the cooking itself you're trying to basically make sure that the food that you cook helps to balance the the properties that you have that need to be like if you're if it's summertime and you have a lot of built up pitta inside you want to have foods that are more cooling. Yes, yeah, cooling, those who cools your body. You have to drink a lot of water and like, because I have a pitta prakriti, I don't eat those, the food which have a pitta uh, dosha, yeah. So right. I use the, uh, the more of like uh, the other food, mm. avoiding those. So in, that's a good point to, because in the summer, we're in the summer right now, it's very hot everywhere, right? So some things that are cooling that people might consider besides the spearmint, cucumbers? Actually, those who have pitta prakriti, do, oh, those should not eat cucumber. <laughs> so okay. Cucumber <laughs> increases your pitta. So uh, the coriander tea, it would be good. The coriander seed tea, so where she used the, so I think here, yeah. So this one, the coriander seed tea, it is really good. It cools your body. So the, so in summer, if you drink the uh, cumin or the coriander tea, that will be really good for you. What else is cooling then? Yes. Lime? Yeah, lime is also like lime juice, not mm -hmm. lime. Mm -hmm. So lime rind again, it has a heating property. So if you should not have a more of the lemon. Right, but the lime is cooling. Yes. So lime, coriander, cumin, yes. uh, mint, spearmint. Spearmint. Any any other ones? You get watermelon probably is cooling. It's not cooling. <laughs> You're killing me, you know. You're really just cooling me. Okay. What? It contains a lot of water though, but it's not cooling. It's summer. It's good to maintain the water balance in your body so that that's why the people eat more of cucumber and watermelon but it's not having the cooling property <laughs> but it's it's good for the water yes <laughs> <laughs> i knew there had to be a good reason so it's it's good all right all right i think we we've, we've heard enough cuz we're not going to be able to eat any of the things that we like okay so tell tell me a little bit about what you've been doing while we've been off talking about how our foods that we like in the summer we're not supposed to eat so <laughs> so i've already roasted my spices so mm. i have roasted the urak dal coriander seeds the fenugreek a little with little asafoetida and dry red chilies so now i'm cooking the carrots mm -hmm. ginger tamarind and jaggery mm -hmm. All together, they are using tamarind. We use in two different ways. In some chutneys, we add the tamarind when we grind the paste, when we make a paste of the the vegetables or whatever we are making chutney. But in this, I've added in this. So when the vegetables get cooked with tamarind, it gives a different taste. Mm. So the tamarind also will be cooked, and it goes really into the vegetables when they all get you know together cooked. And even the jaggery in some chutneys, we add when we grind it so in this recipe I cook carrots and ginger with tamarind jaggery and salt 
so the flavors really go into it and then you can smell it it's nice yeah it smells great now now tamarind is is mainly sour a little bit right yes sour yes. so mostly the chutneys we make are sour we mm -hmm. use tamarind in all of them mm -hmm. and some in some chutneys we use like with the coriander mm -hmm. uh, the green coriander we make a chutney the, there we use uh, lemon mm -hmm. but usually in all the chutneys we use tamarind mm -hmm. so usually in andhra pradesh we uh, use tamarind mm -hmm. and in most of our cooking and also jaggery what's the difference between jaggery and regular sugar see uh, the form of the sugar in jaggery and the regular sugar is different so in the regular sugar you will have it as a glucose which is not good for your body and this has a different form of sugar which is a in a way good uh, it uh, uh, it's not uh, directly going to your body and then increase your glucose mm. and the amount of sugar also jaggery has little more uh, sweeter than the regular sugar mm. and there is no refinement and all that how the white sugar is processed and all that to get the color and mm. all so that won't be there in the jaggery mm. so it is actually from a plant mm. it's kind of it's look like a stick a big a big plant like a corn uh, the plant and those the it, it comes like a stick, so they churn it, get the liquid out of it, and then they solidify it to get jaggery. Okay, but it's not sugar cane then? Yeah, sugar cane. It, it is sugar cane. Of, uh, a different sugar. form. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, and I, it's not processed like a white sugar. Right. So when you see the vendors in the markets in India and they're making uh, cane, sugar, cane sugar, sugar drinks, sugar. right, is that... I mean, is that from a regular, like what you would get if you went to Hawaii, for example, would be the same thing or is yes. it a little bit different? Yes, yes, it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Okay. That's got to be sweet. Yeah, <laughs> but it, but, it, but it's, it's, it looks really good. It, it takes a lot of those uh, little plants to make a, a drink. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, now what are you doing? So <laughs> now I started doing the kheer. So and also I kept... Uh, water for making the soup, mm -hmm. oregano soup. Mm -hmm. So, but now first I will do the kheer. Mm -hmm. So, because it takes a while to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I will uh, roast the cashew here. I have. Uh, I'm adding the cashew. So chopped cashews. Chopped cashews. Raw cashews. Raw cashews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can also use uh, resins for this. I'm not using resin, but you can also use the resin. Well, both resins and cashew, you have to fry it before, or you can also add a fried cashew at the end, because we are adding this at the end. So I will fry it and remove it in the same bowl. And I'm also adding uh, almonds at the end. But so you can I, chopped almonds. Chopped almonds, mm -hmm. but I'm not uh, frying this. Mm. I'm adding as it is. Okay. Only cashew I'm frying. Okay. So it gives, uh, I'm frying in the ghee, so it gives a crispy and the taste to the mm. desert. <laughs> and so I'm really interested. So the the dal that's going to go in here because this is going to have split mung dal yeah. in it. Yeah. So you're gonna are you gonna cook that with the cashews? Uh, and, no, I no. just I just first I fry the cashew and remove it in the same bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will add it at the end. Okay, and then the mung dal. You're going to cook separately, and yes. and is it going to be just by itself, just mung, split mung dal by itself? Yeah, I mm -hmm. add a, now I soak the split mung dal mm -hmm. here. Okay, so that so, needs to soak for like 30 minutes also, uh, or longer? Yes, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes 30 minutes too. Mm -hmm. uh, and really important that you get split mung dal, not whole mung yeah, dal. <laughs> yeah, not whole one. So you can also use the whole one, but you have to soak it for about like one hour. So instead of, mm -hmm. because the split mung dal, it, uh, you can only, it takes 30 minutes. I was just going to show people what it looks like. This is split mung. I don't know if you can see it very well, but split mung, it's kind of yellow and it's split. So that, that's easy. It doesn't have the skin on it either, by the way. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's better. So I just soaked like 30 minutes ago. I used two cups here. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's big. That's a yeah, lot. For Great. All. <laughs> yeah, so everybody gets some, because otherwise I might eat it all. So I'll we'll have to see. All right. So did you have another thing that you wanted to tell people about this? Um, or are we just good so yeah, far? Yeah, we are just good. Okay. So my carrots are cooking now. So in after a few minutes, it will be done. Then I'm, I will grind all together, and I'm done with the chutney. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we'll be glad to eat it. That'll be perfect. So as everybody knows, we do some featured products every month from everybody's. Just things that I think are great for people to have in their cupboard. So this month we have 
Um, one of my, you know, always favorite cookies. Oh, I can get it. Would you, Yashi, would you mind getting me um, the pickles out of there, please? That would be great. And there's something else in there, too? Yeah. And there may be something else, but I can't remember. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. That's it. <laughs> so Walker Shortbread. If you like shortbread cookies and you don't have time to make them yourself, Walker Shortbread is great. This happens to be, they have a gluten-free version, but they have regular versions also. And they have stuff with chocolate chips and everything. But I prefer just the plain Walker Shortbread you know, that's just like a great little, if you need a cookie and you don't have time, as I said, to make it yourself, have some Walker shortbread. This is, this is a tart cherry. Uh, it's particular brand is Smart Juice. It's an organic. And tart cherry is really great because it has a lot of, Yashi, do you know a little bit about some of the medicinal properties of tart cherries or not? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just thought in case you do. I don't have the idea. So what's the tart cherry? Oh, okay. So it's 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 a tart oh. cherry. Yeah, it's a tart cherry, and it, right. Okay. Well, it it has a lot of really good properties to it. So it's something that I think it's really. I think it might have. Uh, don't take my word for it. Look it up yourself. I think it might be able to to be helpful in boosting glycogen levels if you have an issue with that type of thing. So it's really. And besides that, it's it's good. Um, if you don't make pickles at home, Bubby's makes great pickles, and these are their kosher dills and so they're they have different sizes and they're great I love them and finally I figured it was only right that if we're cooking Indian food we should also feature Nirja Mahashwari makes a number of dishes that you can find in the um, fridge that where the ready-made foods are and she makes a dal she makes a uh, roti she makes uh, uh, some kind of paneer dish, I think, also. And I think she makes a kheer out of it with rice. And so uh, her stuff is really good. And she um, always has different dishes in there. So uh, all of these, of course, everybody uh, is happy to make sure that at the end of the show, somebody's going to walk away with, or some of you will walk away with, with these items. So that's great. So we want to thank everybody, as always, you know, for sponsoring the show. We see a couple other things I wanted to, to mention to you. I got, um, I had the pleasure yesterday of being in the studios of KICI in Iowa City where uh, my radio show is aired on, on that particular station, 105.3 FM. And I had uh, a group of five pizza people in the studio with me. I had um, Brandon who is the executive chef at Marquis. I had Gennaro Rusciano from Rusciano's in North Liberty. I had Jesse Sauerbrei from Mount Vernon, Lincoln Wine Bar. Uh, Rock Kemmerer, whose partner is Jerry Zimmerman. Rock was in there from Maggie's Farm, Wood Fired Pizza. And also I had uh, one other person. I had uh, Aziz, who's the owner of Red Vespa in Solon. And all five of these guys have wood fired pizza places and I think it was late April, I went around and, and went to all of them in a span of about seven hours and just tasted their margarita pizzas. And it wasn't, a, and I've talked about it a little bit, but it, I just wanted to mention again, it wasn't to rank them or anything like that, like one, two, three, four, five, but it was to just notice the differences and to talk with them about the different ingredients that they use. Because even though this is the same pizza, margarita, which has just three major elements, right? Three or four. It has dough, it has tomato sauce, it has mozzarella, and it has basil. So it has four major elements. That's it. And so it's really fascinating to, to see the little personal spins that each of these guys puts on this one basic pizza. And it's really fun to to actually experience those differences. So I highly recommend if you have time, do that sometime, even if it's not all in one day, go and, and do it. But the most important thing that I wanted to mention to you is that these guys are, one of the things that I appreciated so much before I talked with them and during and afterwards is the amount of passion that they brought bring to everything that they do. So it's like that dough that they're making and Mark, this is something for you to remember, because that dough that they're making, none of these guys is satisfied with their dough. And, they, and some of them have been doing it, for, well, Gennaro's been doing it since he was a little kid, you know, he, and, and in Naples. And he still is just like, oh, you know, what happened today? You know, because dough is a living, breathing organism. And sometimes it just doesn't want to 
do what you are hoping that it's going to do, right? And so all these guys are constantly, you know, every day they're trying to just, you know, tweak and see what it's like. And of course, the humidity and the temperature, everything influences all this. So it's really, it's really exciting to talk to people who are so passionate about cooking and so passionate about what they're doing. And those are the people who are actually making this for you to enjoy when you go to their places. So that's, that's really, really uh, a, a very exciting thing. And along with that, I want to mention to you, because I've been guilty of this so many times on this show and, and every day when people ask me where, where they should eat and things like that. And I want to make it clear how I really feel, uh, though it's hard for me to say this. But I want to make it really, really clear that the best pizza just like the best wine, or the best mashed potatoes, or the best pasta, or the best dal, or the best chutney, is what you like. That's the best. What you like is the best. And it doesn't matter if I like something else, or if I don't like that. If you like it, that's all that matters. You know, Because you are an individual, your physiology is totally unique and different, and so what works for you is, that's perfect. So don't listen to anybody who has their nose up in the air like I do most of the time, saying, you know, oh, don't go there, that's terrible, or, you know, this isn't done the right way, or whatever. If you like it, that's the most important thing. And don't let, and really, don't let anybody tell you that it should be different than that, okay? Because it, it's, your, it's your physiology. Thank you, Mary, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, people say, you know, oh, what's the best wine? What, which, what wine do you like? You know, it's like, you know, that's, that's the best wine. And last, for my little um, soapbox during this show, uh, there's a great new series out that I highly recommend everybody watch. It's called Broken Bread. It's on TasteMade, so you have to get the TasteMade app or down or go to their website or whatever. Uh, and it stars, uh, the star is Roy Choi, who is a... Uh, very well-known chef in the LA area. He began, his reputation started uh, when he um, had a Kogi truck, Kogi hot dog truck, and uh, took it around to different places and he became very famous that way. And he, he's had quite a very interesting background uh, being on the streets in LA and uh, running into all kinds of issues uh, when he was growing up. And uh, he now has, uh, as far as in his profession, he's at the top of his profession as far as a chef is concerned and commands a lot of respect. And he's trying to give back a lot to make people aware of the different situations that exist out there in terms of other people maybe not having the same access to uh, great food and, and opportunity to, to utilize great food. So I highly recommend this series called Broken Bread on Taste Made. All right, where are we? So I have added dal, the soaked dal, the, all of this. And I added uh, three measurement of like, for two cups I have added three measurement of the milk. You can add like four, but it's almost full I thought. I will add only three. So when you say you, two cups of rice, you added three cups of milk? Uh, not no. rice, it's dal. I'm sorry, dal. two cups of dal, you added three, three cups? Three cup of milk. Okay. Yeah. But at your home, if you're making one cup, add two cup of milk, or you can use a one cup of milk and one cup of water also. And you can use just water and you can add a milk later. If you are a vegan, then you can use the coconut milk instead of this milk. I bet it's really good with coconut milk actually, yeah. probably, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're using Radiance Dairy. We, we are lucky enough to have uh, Francis and mm -hmm. Susan Tiki's fantastic organic dairy here, so. Yeah, traditionally we use the coconut milk, fresh coconut milk. We make at home and we use that. Hmm. Yeah, we probably aren't going to do that. <laughs> yeah. You can probably go out and pick the coconuts where you are. Yeah, we have a like, usually we use like two to three coconuts every day in our home. So <laughs> so nice. I remember you know, listening to, I think I've related this before, I remember listening to a, a radio program called good food in, in that's out of Santa Barbara and the woman was at the farmer's market and it was in the middle of winter right citrus season but and and they said uh, oh here's our uh, 
tangerine vendor? Or how many how many different varieties do you grow? And the guy goes, 50. <laughs> and, and then he said, how many did you bring with you today? About 12 or 15. You know, and it's like, we're lucky to find one. You know, it's like, it's, it's just amazing. Coconuts, mangoes, right? You have tons of mangoes where you are. Yes, mm -hmm. there are different varieties of mangoes. Mm -hmm. You'll have a small one to a big one, mm -hmm. and some with raw ones. And we make a uh, yearly ones, we make pickle with raw mangoes. Mm -hmm. Everyone, when you go in the month of May and June, so all the women will be busy in making the pickles. It's for the whole year we make and store them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a busy job for us. So we make papads, and because it's uh, uh, summer mm -hmm. and then sun dry everything, so that's it. The women will be full busy. <laughs> so when you say sun dry, that's really what you mean. It really is sun dry. Yes, it really is sun dry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even we too. Mm -hmm. When we do, it's it's like the temperature will be around 40 plus mm -hmm. in Celsius, mm -hmm. so around 110 uh, Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like I still remember when my mom used to make a. It's kind of a sweet variety of mango. So we make a pickle which is sweet with the jaggery. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be there for the whole year. Mm -hmm. So we used to. It's like she make all the spices and soak them in the jaggery and the spices, the mangoes for seven days, and then remove all the. It 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 forms kind of a liquid. Then remove it and. Drink dry those mangoes for seven days, and then cut them into pieces, then mix both. And well, what's your address, by the way? I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> your mother's address, I mean. <laughs> so it's like my mother, mm -hmm. my mother, and every day does that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, So all the women do that, uh, make that uh, pickle. And we used to eat that mangoes just like that. It is the children's job to sun dry them on the top of the you know the house or outside the house mm -hmm. and those mangoes were really tasty because they are soaked for seven days in all the spices and jaggery and it's kind of a snack yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm sure it's kind of a snack it sounds it sounds absolutely amazing yeah. and uh maybe you'll do a tour and we can all come and, 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 sure. and do it and and it's funny because you know other cultures do the same thing you know they they have whatever is plentiful uh, at a particular time of year, and then they make these specialties, like you're talking about, that most of us don't even, I mean, I don't know unless I get a chance to talk with you about it, you know, you hear about that, and like in Sicily, there's this thing called Estrato di Pomodoro, which is, people are, are think about, you know, sun-dried tomatoes, which for the most part aren't sun-dried, they're oven-dried, uh, and, and people think about, you know, like tomato paste, those are the concentrates, but Estrato di Pomodoro is actually sun-dried tomatoes that have been dried so long in that hot Sicilian sun and then ground up and it's this thick paste that's just nothing but unbelievable tomato essence yeah. and like that's kind of what you're talking about with this mango it's like yeah even mm. with this mangoes also we cut into pieces uh, soak them for two days in the with the tam turmeric and salt then mm. squeeze when you add salt it, it gives water mm. keep that water and then we dry those mangoes and then make a powder of it. it's like an mm. armchair the dry mango powder mm. it's really so usually uh, when we buy in them from a market and mm. the packaged products they mm. have some you know, uh, other uh, stabilizers to keep it, uh, you know, uh, good at the storage. Mm -hmm. So it's only the mango when we make at home. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. You know, we've got just a couple minutes, and I forgot we mentioned the oregano soup at the beginning, but then we kind of skipped around, didn't get to it. So you want to tell people exactly how you do that? Yes. Yeah, I chopped the uh, oregano here. I used a uh, fresh oregano. It's not looking fresh now because mm -hmm. I already removed it. But here is the fresh oregano. So I used this and I removed the leaves and chopped the leaves. Leaves, not the flowers. You can also use the flowers. Mm. So I just to show you, I left the flowers. Mm. Yeah. You can also use the flower. And for one person, five to six leaves are enough. Mm. So I have added like maybe about 30 leaves for this uh, much. Uh, soup and I have added uh, salt and also I have added a little bit of jaggery and pepper and I am going to season it with uh, hing and also with some uh, cumin and lemon at the end. Fresh lemon, Fresh lemon. juice. Fresh lemon mm. juice, yeah. Nice. nice. And is there any ghee in that? 
little bit of oil or ghee, anything. Mm. Yeah, it's just a seasoning. Okay. That's great. Thank you so much. Ladies, it's been just an absolute pleasure. And before I say um, so long for this show, I just want to mention, I see Laura Cohen here from the Lord's Cupboard. And just so that everybody remembers, if you have a garden and it's producing and you've got more than you need or you just want to share, you can bring over your fresh food to the Lord's Cupboard every afternoon, Monday through Friday, between 1 and 4. And Laura will see to it that that gets to people who could really enjoy and need uh, those fresh foods. And if you want to do the same, you can do the same thing by buying produce at everybody's and bringing it over there too, or any other kinds of canned goods. I think everybody's has a box there, actually, the, for, for whatever foods you can put it in there. So that's something that um, is available. So, Mr. Strong, we're about ready to go, right? This is this is the end of another <laughs> another 60 minutes, and it's been hot back here. I can just tell you, it is really <laughs> it is really warm, right? So, one more reminder: August 6th is the next show, first Tuesday in August, right here at Green Building Supply. Mark Cohen is going to be creating eggplant parmesan, and I think that's really interesting because I'm looking right now at another person who has an eggplant parmesan specialty, so this should be interesting. I hope he, sh I hope he shows up uh, that night, and then they can like have uh, interesting conversation maybe together. We'll see. Anyway, anyway a cook-off. I've asked him to cook on the show too many times, and he's always refused, so we'll forget about it. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Thanks to Green Building Supply, everybody's Whole Foods, and also Jason Strong of Fairfield Media Center. You've been watching great taste uh, presentation of Fairfield Media Center at Green Building Supply. Great taste. Sweet. Sour. So good to taste.